Hello again, aliens and fellow astronomy fans. Today we're going to take a look at capturing Venus with the Edge 11. I'll try a bunch of different filters, see which ones turn out the best. All that and more coming up next. <laughs> Venus right now is up there in the center. I head down towards the tree over there by about 719 and its lowest point before it hits the tree it's about 25 degrees of altitude. It's a bit higher right now obviously. just want to take a look at the, this is the Celestron Edge 11 again that I've shown in previous videos. And right now it's in planetary mode for the hookup here. Just a quick look here, I've got it directly screwed on to uh, the OTA using the OTA adapter followed by the one and a quarter inch adapter and then the 2x Barlow in this case. This is the ZWO ADC. And then with the nose piece, we have both the filter and that goes directly into the ADC from the ASI 224MC. That's how that looks. Now with this, right at the moment, I still have the weights set to DSO mode. And I'm going to uh, have to basically take all of these weights off of the ADM adapter here that I have on the front side. to get. Th that just barely gets the declination axis balanced. Actually, it's still a little bit top heavy despite that. Or a little bit back heavy, I should say. So ideally I would probably want to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere and I was thinking of putting a few half inch nuts and washers on here to uh, give me a, a little less weight than what these single, uh, these alone weigh too much. If I leave a single one of these on here, they weigh too much, brings the whole thing forward too much. So I need, and the same deal here on the RA axis, this is in DSO mode. I slide this guy up and I move this to this position and that brings it into balance for planetary mode. And again, this is my first time doing Venus. I've done the other planets with success with an 8SE in the past and we'll see how Venus turns out. Alright, I've taken off the weights and still a little bit tail heavy like I said here on the deck axis, uh, but that's alright. It's Pretty close. Uh, RA is perfect and that is in that arrangement as I mentioned it would be. So here we go. When I first began the Venus video it was February 19th so Venus was pretty high and further to the left in the sky away from the trees. Well now it's March 25th I'm trying to wrap up the video and some shots where it hits the tree and as you can see with the dome and the tree and everything looking out through the slot right now it's aiming at where Venus would be, up there, and I've got till it hits that corner of the tree where the two trees meet, and here's the view from this March 25th attempt here of the uh, position. It is right about where my fingertip was there. So I've got some good distance before it hits the trees, so I'll be able to shoot it in the dark as well as, as well as this twilight that I'm doing right now. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. Alright, I'm back. I'm in a remote desktop connection to take a look at what we've got going on here with Venus so far. It took me a while to get in focus. I had to take the Rigel end step and disconnect it to get the focus quicker than using the uh, software. But I've got it in focus now and it's drifting a tad, so let's recenter that a little bit. Uh, oop, wrong way. Uh, we can uh, turn on the ADC tuner now that it's in center. As you can see, I've got it pretty much centered. I'm using the 807 nanometer filter. So that's ready to go. I just need to tweak the exposure and the gain here, which the biggest problem I have still with the sensor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this to make it more obvious. It's not really showing up there, but when it's out of focus, you can still see a lot of specks on the uh, on the image. I've tried to clean the actual 
glass on the camera, but that hasn't really helped even though it looks crystal clear to me. But I think we're okay here though, because when we come into focus it looks alright. So now I'm just gonna I'm gonna adjust the exposure. I was expecting it to be needing more like a three, but I guess with this filter you don't. And we can check the frames per second. We're in a 128 range, which is actually what I was hoping for. Um, and I can play with the focus a little bit over here remotely. One other thing I just wanted to point out was that this Ioptron uh, software here lacks a sync button. So in Stellarium, it should be possible if you have the current object set to Venus to hit the sync button here to sync it. I'm not sure there's a sync in here and then there's a sync here. I don't know if you have this on scope and sync. It's the same as having it on sync and then hitting sync. I've tried them both. I recentered it and she's holding in the center. Quite a bit of motion but I guess that's pretty typical for holding such a cannon aimed at Venus like this. Center it there and then set the region of interest something like that it also seems to blast out the exposure now our levels are way too high so exposure yeah that has more of an effect so now I'll say um, I'm using the BSER format and I'm gonna give it and I don't have a label for this filter but uh, I'll just call it IR and I'm going to set a limit here of, I'm going to go for, 1,000 would probably be usable, but I want to do a longer set. So let's start with 3,000. And the current capture rate of 125 frames per second. One thing to point out, at least with the way I have things going right now, it's uh, pretty hard to get an exact focus or tell if you're in focus. About the best I seem to be able to do is take her out of focus, like that, and then bring her back inward until she starts to fail again, right about there, and then go back out again, right around there, but it's really hard to tell. It's not like Jupiter or Saturn, which is a huge target, and you can see distinct features. Here it's a bit harder. Alright, I've uh, put in the 685 filter and this guy is a lot dimmer than the other one, uh, than the 807. So really need to work with uh, playing with the exposure, but you can see as I go up in exposure it gets some hot spotting, which I don't think you want. So I'm going to try this, but I don't think this one is so ideal with the 224 camera. At least not for not for Venus. It does get a little bit better once you uh, set the region of interest, however, as you can see. And there it is. And yet one more thing to point out or uh, uh, mention is that trying to get this uh, histogram to be at least 50%, I, I think was the target for planetary. It's been about a year since we've done any planetary or, or nine months. So my memory is not serving me correct probably here, maybe 60%, I forget. Right now they're uh, 80, 41, and 43. So I'll try a few different recordings and uh, see which one pans out the best. Alright, here's a live shot from the dome here. Uh, this is later in the video, March 25th again. I'm using the 640, or 742 IR astronomic filter. And uh, the auto centering is cranking away here as best it can. I've got some pretty good frame rate, and my histogram is looking pretty good there. It's still a bit light out, but I believe I'll get usable data from this. It's just a day past longest elongation. I have to add that switching the weights to planetary mode helps to keep it more stable. It's not bouncing around as much. So it's better to not be lazy and leave it in DSO mode where you don't have things balanced works out a bit better.
I have found that the UV filter performed the best without the bar low, although the image is rather small, at least with the 224MC. And I'm getting only 10 frames per second here. I believe it was less than that, like 7, with the bar low in place, the 2x bar low. And I'll show that image at the end of the video with the UV and no bar low. Also, the uh, um, it's hard to get the graph just right with this UV filter. Um, above 50% on at least two of the bands there. But if you start to play with the numbers too much, uh, the uh, the one that's too low already you know, it'll drop even more. So I had to kind of settle for that as the the average. <laughs> For one of the last UV images in this video, you'll see I'm using my OAG setup at F10 without the reducer. Uh, this is the ASI 294MC Pro and the ZWO filter wheel. Inside I've put uh, the UV Bader filter. I have a spacer and a Celestron OAG 174mm Mini. That's for guiding stars and, and DSO, but not for planetary, obviously. Uh, then a blue ball spacer, and then connected to the OTA adapter. And I found that this arrangement actually worked pretty well. I drizzled at 1.5 or even 3.0. 1.5 looked a little bit better, and it gave a uh, pretty good image for UV. Although it took uh, 20,000 frames, I might have been able to do it in less, less than that, but I let it go till 20,000 frames some 30 to 40 minutes i believe it was to get that far with that many frames for uv obviously if you use something like a 290 mm uh, mono cam you'll probably have a higher frame rate and better success than using the 294 but i was just using what i had on hand